Pro Evolution Soccer Series has fallen from grace over recent years, mostly because of Konami's inability to up the ante for current console hardware. Last year was a particular low point, with poor graphics, dreadful presentation and basic online play, resulting in massive disappointment for fans. While Pro Evolution Soccer 2009 doesn't completely redeem the series, it's definitely a step in the right direction, thanks to new game modes, an improved editor and even a Champions League license. However, the dated animation system and poor online mode remain, meaning that there's a lot left that needs fixing. There's a great game at the core of Pro Evo 2009, but it desperately needs an overhaul in order to keep up with the rest of the genre. In terms of gameplay, Pro Evolution Soccer 2009 is essentially the same as its predecessors. While there are a couple of key changes, they haven't fundamentally altered the style of the game, and fans of the series should feel right at home. The overall pace has been reduced slightly, while the ball feels heavier, both of which mean that it's easier than ever to link passes together. The game is also incredibly fluid when you're trying to link together through balls and crosses, and moving the ball about in general just feels natural and instinctive. However, football by its very nature is unpredictable, and Pro Evolution Soccer 2009 feels overly coordinated in this area. Nowhere is this more apparent than when you run a player down the wing. You'll see their rather simple animation routines repeating over and over, almost like a Benny Hill sketch. Players just generally lack individuality, and while they jostle for the ball and bounce off one another, they still don't feel like they're physical enough to actually feel connected. There are a number of new additions to the features list this year, with top billing going to the new Champions League mode. Yes, Europe's biggest tournament has made it into Pro Evo, including some of its key teams and sponsors. This is quite a boon for Konami, who have long failed to secure any official competitions for the series. You're treated to the same dramatically shot videos and that staring handle score that feature on TV, and overall it's quite a refreshing change from Pez's usual unofficial feel. However, it's all just superficial wrapping on a tournament that you could create yourself, and only 13 teams from this year's competition are included in their official capacity. Key teams that play as part of the Champions League include Arsenal and Chelsea, and in the game they're still called uh, North London and London FC, respectively, and are listed outside of the official Champions League roster. The other big new addition is the Become a Legend mode, which eagle-eyed Pro Evo fans will know actually appeared in a previous Japanese release of the series. In this mode, you create your own player from scratch, choosing his height, weight and facial details, even down to his celebration routines and likelihood of picking up an injury. You can also scan your own face in if you have a PlayStation Eye or Xbox Live Vision camera, but the game literally stickers your face on top of an existing model. So you need to adjust the skin tones and both the model and the photo to attain some sort of parity. The other alternative is to make your player look as freaky as possible, and the option to colour your skin fluorescent pink certainly helps to this end. Become a Legend is a novel, but ultimately pretty boring take on the standard game. You spend most of the time running around off the ball, and depending on your chosen position, you'll need to chase down attackers or help to score goals. Unlike the very similar Be A Pro mode in FIFA 09, there's no incentive for actually performing your job on the pitch, meaning you're not rewarded for making team working moves such as passes and tackles. If your team is scoring goals and winning games, you'll be able to move on to newer teams in better leagues. This doesn't really add much variation to the overall monotony. The online version of the Legends mode is much better, as you win points for making successful passes and tackles, so it's much more beneficial to work as part of a team. The downside is that it only supports four players online, and you have to take on an AI team, which is pretty boring. The lack of official licenses is something that Pro Evo fans should be used to by now, but we're glad to see that the edit mode has become even more extensive this year. You can manually edit everything from individual players and teams to stadiums and competitions. If you're willing to make the effort, you can go and change team names from having preposterous titles such as Yorkshire Orange to their proper names such as Hull City. Even better, you can now import your own images and photos via USB memory stick or a PlayStation Eye or Xbox Vision camera if you have one. This allows you to change the emblem on the kits if you can get a photo of the real one so you don't have to settle with Arsenal or North London as they're called in the, uh, in the game itself having an emblem that looks like it belongs to an Eastern European team. Just head over to the official site, grab the proper JPEG and just import it instead. Konami's clearly put some work into the presentation this year, and while the results are still some way off professional, they're definitely trying. The menu system has been given a pop art slash Gilbert and George overhaul, which may look a bit dated, but it does give the game an artistic look in the fairly commercial world of sports games. In terms of sound though, the game is just atrocious, with generic, nondescript music filling the menu system, and undoubtedly the worst commentary yet. 
The duo of John Champion and Mark Lawrenson have unwisely decided to try and inject some humour into this year's proceedings with comedically bad results. They say things like, This will end in disappointment for one party and inner party for the other. On other occasions, John jokes about Mark actually having done some pre-match research, only for Mark to go on and deliver the usual generic drivel. No need then for nerves. Here's a chance for the players and the managers to express themselves on this broadest of stages. Even worse, they make basic factual inaccuracies, praising defenders who haven't even touched the ball or midfielders who've made passes that didn't even reach the recipient. Last year's online mode was a shambles, laggy, simple and prone to connection dropout. It was updated post-release, but it never really got to the point where it really should have. This year's game is a lot better, but it's still lacking in both features and performance. At the time of review, you had to click through no less than six pages of service agreements and status updates just to get into the online mode, and even then it's a confusing collection of menus and sub-options. Servers are split into language, as you can text chat in the lobby before a game, and each lobby has a maximum player count of 100. You can challenge individual players to matches or pair up automatically with the quick match option, but it usually takes a long time and many menu screens just to get into a game. The online game was also still laggy, with players that would disappear from one location and reappear in another, which strangely seemed to afflict the standard one-on-one -on -one online mode rather than the four-player Legends mode. All in all, Pro Evolution Soccer 2009 is a good game, but it's one that's failed to keep up with what's expected in the footballing genre. It used to get by on being the best football on playability, but it can no longer claim to being that anymore. The new mode certainly adds some attraction for fans, but the Champions League mode is essentially just flashy dressing for a competition that still doesn't offer all the official teams. While the Become a Legend mode is neither as feature-packed nor as fun to play as FIFA's Be a Pro equivalent. If you love Pro Evolution Soccer's gameplay and simple control system, then this year's game is worth checking out, but everyone else has a right to demand much more from Konami's increasingly stale series.